Hello everyone and welcome back to Lucky Loaders 15 where I'll be giving you three of my best bets for tomorrow's race in action. Going to be uh, not as many bets as I normally tip up tomorrow. That's because I don't really fancy too much to be honest with you. We're going to be focusing on uh, my nap at Bailey's Town, my next best at Ripon and my long shot at Newbury. There's going to be some rain around the country tomorrow so a lot of these uh, prices and a lot of the fields they could really cut up tomorrow so it was quite difficult to know uh, what's going to uh, be running come post time so I, I've tried to go on with um, some selections that I think will make it to post time and have solid chances of going very well um, but before we get into that uh, first of all I'll say I finally get my hair cut tomorrow so um, for those who are saying oh you need to get a haircut yeah, this uh, this will be coming off, get, going for grade three all over, uh, on the back of sides at least anyway. So uh, yeah, uh, next time you see me, I will have had a haircut. And also as well, before I go into those tips tomorrow, I'll just quickly do a recap on how today's selections went. Despite having two winners, uh, we would have just come out on a small loss actually. Um, our Nap Peregrine uh, run won, we did put him up at 11 to 4, but I know that that price would have gone quite quickly after I put it out there last night. The Peregrine run, you know, if, if uh, there are great ones during the summer for National Hunt Horses, surely he would he would get one. He's been such a c consistent performer in these graded races Dur during the summer jumps campaign over in Ireland. Possibly could be heading back for a race like the Galway Plate where he finished uh, in fourth place last year. So he ran a really good race and he definitely probably had that race fitness edge over him, which uh, saw him uh, win out uh, in quite comfortable style in the end, even though um, there were one or two uh, interesting challenges in that race. Also as well, our next best one, that was definitely not an easy watch at uh, Ross Common with uh, Pondus. He did win snugly in the end. It was comfortable in the end, but God, it took him a long time to get there. You know, he was he was out the back for a long way and it was quite um, a slow motion finish, but I think his class just prevailed today. That was a listed race. He had good form uh, behind the likes of Adieb last year, you know, who's now a, a group one horse. So yeah, he had a lot of strong form lines on paper and I think he'll definitely be one to keep on side, even if he does step up in grade later in the year, you know, and especially if there's going to be a bit of cut in the ground because he seems to excel in those conditions. So yeah, the nap and the next best, they gave us two winners today. Away from that, um, our selections at Pontefract. Illusionist, to be fair, he actually did run well considering he just uh, finished in fourth place. But he wasn't far beaten uh, by Rayon for uh, Carl Burks. But I think uh, that form will be producing some winners over the next few weeks or so. So uh, he's definitely not one to dismiss next time out. Definitely uh, will be uh, keeping an eye on him again. Same for the other selection, really. Athmad for Ruth Carr. Now, Ruth Carr, um, she's definitely going to be uh, having some winners soon. A lot of her horses, they're just starting to look like they're about to hit form a lot of them are either placing or, or they're just finishing outside the frame and they're becoming pretty well handicapped and this Athmad I think maybe the track just didn't suit him today I think maybe a longer a longer straight uh, like a track like Doncaster where he showed uh, a good um, a good run last time would probably be more his bag I could see him uh, running well, a uh, 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 course with a longer home straight. Maybe York could be a place for him to to go, or or possibly Haydock. You know, uh, a track like that where they've got a bit more of a of a home straight for him to get into gear. But I think uh, if the handicapper drops him a couple of pounds, I think I would uh, be keen to maybe keep him on side again. You know, because um, I think he is starting to come really well handicapped now on some of his old form. And even though he's nowhere near that form, he should he should. Uh, still be good enough to win and win a race off off the mark I'd have would have thought in the mid sixties considering he used to be rated ninety one and he has has been running okay but not up to the the level that he used to. But yeah, um I think Ruth Carr's horses are going to be coming out and winning again soon. And uh and Newton Abbott his dream he, he he to be fair, like he, he was in contention. He probably might have needed the run, you know. Um but yeah, it was just one of those, you know, that yeah, probably neither the run. Maybe uh, could follow him next time, but probably would have to assess the quality and strength and depth of the field. But if he ran on good ground again, I might be interested to uh, possibly uh, keep him in the notebook. And then our lay of the day, well, I, I did get that wrong. Avenue of Stars. I thought I thought um, if the rain had got in the ground, 
it wouldn't have been up this horse's street because he hadn't really shown too much form on soft ground and he'd been a bit of a quirky type and up one or two points during the race i thought he looked beat but nothing really was coming from off the pace um to to to, to really get up sheep scars lad uh, was the horse that i probably did fancy i didn't back him but um sheep scars lad uh god he's probably like the best um he's probably like the best horse in in training like, placing consistently i think i, I was uh, gonna post out on twitter but i didn't in the end i think he's had uh top he's finished in the first four on his last nine starts he just doesn't know how to win he, he likes to like have like one or two horses beat him but he just makes a frame all the time you know and these aren't small fields where it was four out of four like we're talking like four out of like 12 four out of 13 you know he, he just always seems to run on in in the closing stages and there's like kind of an eye catcher and and, it, and he's not probably getting to a mark where you, he's really going to cash in on it. But he's one of those horses that, you know, as soon as you, you stop backing him, he's going to go in and win. It's a common case for all us punters. But, um, but yeah, it's just uh, frustrating a horse like that, that it's probably in the handicapper's grasp. You know, he's probably a, he's probably a, a yardstick that the handicapper measures horses around in that kind of grade, you know. And uh, yeah, it's going to be, he'll probably be winning sometime soon, but he probably won't have my money on it when he does. But uh, anyway, enough of me waffling on, on the tips uh, from uh, from uh, today. We'll get into them tomorrow now. And our nap is going to come in the two o'clock at Bellews Town with King Pellinor for Mark Walsh and Joseph O'Brien in the colours of the J.P. McManus Group. Now this horse is currently three to one, um, best odds for bookmakers at the moment. And this horse I thought was quite a cosy winner at Tipperary last time out on his uh, seasonal reappearance. And uh, I think he's still fairly unexposed over over hurdles, you know. And, and there's probably going to be some rain around at Bailey's Town tomorrow, you know. It's going to be soft and that's going to not be a bother for him. He's won on heavy ground at Gorham before on the flat. I think he was rated in the high 70s. Uh, towards the end of last season you know and he put in some decent efforts and and he's not maybe been the most straightforward but I think he's got a good chance in this race and Barry's Town is a, is a track that sometimes can favour uh, front runners it's quite a sharp um, twist in track and uh, if he gets uh, towards the front tomorrow and, and is prominent I could definitely see him using his turn of speed um, from his uh, flat career uh, to maybe put some of these rivals to bed. He's still very unexposed. I think he's only had a couple of starts over hurdles. And he's only four years old, you know, so he's got probably a bit more improvements to come. Joseph O'Brien's team have been in good form on both codes since uh, racing has resumed in Ireland. Mark Walsh as well is riding well. Three winners from his last seven rides in the last fortnight. So uh, he's going along nicely. And I just think King Pellinor tomorrow is still relatively unexposed in this sphere of racing. And at three to one, I'm going to take a chance on him as my nap tomorrow. So that's going to be my nap there. We then go to the 210 at Ripon. We don't have to wait too long. These two tips come in quick succession. And I'm going to go with the core specialist here, Ben Lid, for Paul Mulrennan and Chris Fairhurst. Now, this horse has got a great record at Ripon. He's three wins from six starts. And Ripon is a bit of a strange track. Um, it's actually quite undulating in the fact that uh, there's a lot of dips in the track and a lot of horses, they just don't handle it. But this this boy, he does, and he's got, like I say, a great record at Rip. And he actually won on his last uh, start where the race played to his strengths. Uh, there was a lot of pace on early and he came uh, with a late run and he actually won by over a length in the end. So so that was a good performance by Ben Alid. And even though he is off a mark of 84, he can still be quite competitive off this mark. And I just think the race might set up for him quite nicely, you know. And he's 9-2 with bookmakers at the moment. And a lot of these horses haven't tried ripping before. And I just wonder if they might struggle with the track. And with a horse, you know, who's going to run well and is in good form. And he can put back-to-back -to -back wins together. He did it once when he won at Chester. And then he went on to win at Ripon. One of his victories came after a back-to-back -back win at Ripon. So... A lot to like about his chances, I think, tomorrow. And I just think the race could set up for him quite well again. Paul Mulrennan's been going along okay as well. He's been having winners since the racing's resumed. And for me at 9-2, I think he's a solid candidate to go very close tomorrow. So that's why he's going to be my next best. We then end with my final tip, which runs in the 8.40 at Newbury with King's Royal Hussar for Tom Marquand and Alan King in the Henry Ponsonby colours, where you've got the likes of Scarlet Dragon, who does wins in these colours. Uh, some great horses uh, in recent years. Uh, with this uh, group of owners but this horse um, 
for the first time in his career on the flat, he's actually going to be tried over a trip tomorrow, which I think he's been crying out for for ages. He was quite eye-catching, I thought, last time, and better than the bare results suggested when he finished fifth at Doncaster. He plugged on quite bravely under Tom Marquand, and there was a heavy shower that day when they were running. You should go back and watch a replay if you can. You can watch it on the, at the races.com website. Just type in his name, and you'll be able to see the race and replay. But that race was over 10 furlongs, and he's going up to a mile and five tomorrow. Now, some people might worry and go, Oh, no, like he's going so much up in trip. Well, he get it. Well, he should, because he was running over hurdles a few times um, during the winter, and he did get a third place finish on soft ground at Musselburgh, uh, not Musselburgh, Market Raisin, over uh, two miles. So you like to think that he can get the trip, you know, and it and it wasn't a disgraced effort by by no means, even though it probably wasn't the most strong, tr strongest hurdle race. But I think of a mark of 64, he's got, he's got a race in him to run really well. And I think the course at Newbury could suit him quite well with a long straight. There could be some, well, there is going to be some rain around tomorrow. And even though he's not, he's not uh, won a race yet, He's going to probably handle the conditions okay. I think some of these horses won't handle the conditions. They've got stamina queries. He's obviously got a stamina query when it comes on the flat. But if he's been running over hurdles, you like to think that, that the trip shouldn't be an issue. And like I said, I just think he has been crying out for a, for a trip from what I've seen of him. I remember he's been quite a frustrating horse in the past for me. But um, Alan King's horses are in really good form. And I like backing his flat horses as well. He's had a good start. Obviously, he had a few Royal Ascot winners, didn't he? And he's had one or two other nice horses going, like the likes of Midnight Legacy. So he's definitely an informed stable. Tom Marquand as well has been riding okay. And this horse is currently priced up at 9-1 to one with bookmakers. And you can get five places out there. I'm not sure how many runners will be come post time. So do make sure uh, if you're going with different bookmakers and they are paying the extra places. Some of them do say that if so many runners or if... If there are so many runners, they will pay out in the places. But if they reduce them, sometimes they reduce the places. So if the field is smaller, they reduce the places. But yeah, keep an eye on that. By the current time of the recording, you can get this horse at 9 to 1 each way with the five places. And that's the recommended tip. So I'll just quickly recap on the tips. In the 2 o'clock at Bellies Town over in Ireland, that's my nap. King Pelinor at 3 to 1. The 2.10 at Ripon, we go for Benelid. If I pronounce that right, at 9 to 2, win only bet. And then we go to the 840 at Newbury, the last race of uh, the card there with Kings Royal, who's are currently 9 to 1. And I'm recommending uh, each way uh, bet with five places on offer with quite a few bookmakers. So, yeah, they're the three best uh, bets for tomorrow's horse racing action. So, if you haven't done so already, please hit the subscribe button for more videos here on my YouTube channel. You can also follow me on social media, where the best, best place to do so is where my handle is at LuckyLoader15. There's a description, or there's a click in the description box below and there's also as well a click if you click in the description box below you'll see a link to my website as well which is www.chrisloaderacing.co.uk where you can find out a full portfolio of my work so that's all i gotta say hopefully we can have some winners tomorrow please gamble responsibly we'll be seeing you soon